So today's video is just a quick demonstration on how a double roller cotton gin actually works. This is the gin that you saw me build in the first video of this series, and today I'm going to show you how it will actually gin Sea Island cotton, as well as demonstrate how it will not gin Upland cotton. And this is Sea Island cotton that I grew this year, and this is a seed of Upland cotton that I stole from a field in St. Matthews, don't tell the police. And that is a modern cultivar of upland cotton, and this is a circa 1930s strain of Sea Island cotton that's only run out maybe less than 10 generations since it went into the seed vault, uh, that's still in the air. Found a cool uh, genetic study that actually points to this being exactly what I think it is, and kind of backs up my provenance, although I haven't found any historical record of my provenance other than some really clear, you know, links that I can see in historical documents that pretty much all but prove that it came from the Florence Research Station here in South Carolina. So without any further ado, let's gin some cotton. Alright, so first things first, you gotta pull the seed out, and then you gotta fluff it up just a little bit, just to get the the lint off the seed. Historically they would do this by whipping, which is they would either take like a bowstring and use it to slap the cotton, or they would put all the cotton in a big basket and just beat the snot out of it with like a stick or a whip or something like that. But this just fluffs up the lint and gets it off the seed. In upland cotton, it just comes pre-whipped. That's how it comes out of the bowl. In long staple cotton, as you can see, it's very tightly wound. And that's just a byproduct of this being a, a hand-picked, hand-ginned, hand-cleaned, hand-moated, you know, heirloom strain. So they never selected for big fluffiness because being big and fluffy catches a lot of dirt, catches a lot of sand, catches a lot of rain, and it makes it degrade more quickly. This is more compacted and it's, it's more weather resistant given how small the fibers are. All right, so to gin this stuff, you're gonna to wanna to hold down on the baseboard. I'm doing this sort of off-center so that you can actually see what's going on in the camera, but typically you would be standing right in front of this like that, or you would be kneeling down with your knee like this. Or you would just have this bolted to a table or something. So this, this counters the rotation of the roller and keeps the gin from tipping over and pitching. And that's why this board is here. So what you wanna do is you wanna get your lint, you wanna fluff it up, like that, get it all to one side, stick it right here between the rollers, start turning, let it go, and voila, your cotton's ginned. There's my seat. Whoop. And here's my gin lint. Now, I don't have a lap board on here. I don't have a stationary knife on the back that keeps this from wrapping underneath the rollers, which is why this does that. But when you're ginning by hand, that's not really a big issue. If it does become an issue, you can always just uh, screw in a thin piece of uh, plastic or a thin piece of metal onto the back so that it touches the back side of the roller. Then when the lint comes through, it hits that and falls off out the back rather than getting caught under the roller and coming underneath this uh, tension board. Now let's demonstrate upland cotton. And if we're lucky, this will actually gen. If we're not lucky, it'll get caught between the rollers and it'll break this connection up here. Except I don't have this keyed, so it shouldn't. This handle should just free spin if it gets stuck. Uh, I have a second one of these that I was using for demonstration purposes, and I took a piece like this, and I said, now watch this, I'm going to break the gin. And I did this, stuck it in here, started ginning, and as soon as the seat got stuck, the, the key nail in this that was keeping the handle from rotating on the roller itself went <laughs> and just gouged out a huge piece of wood in there. And it made for a very impressive demonstration and really proved my point. But I hope this doesn't do that. And it shouldn't because it's not keyed. Now let's see if it did anything. Uh, and as you can see, let's turn it backwards. Did not gen. It pulled the lint through and it didn't seize on the seed because this one is built far nicer than the other one I was using for demonstration purposes, but it did not pull all of the lint off the seed. It was getting stuck and there wasn't enough friction on the rollers to pull it through. Let's try that again and see if it'll work. Ah, and we were lucky. We actually got that to gin upland cotton. But 
Typically, this is not the case. And if you're doing this on a large industrial scale, like you would be if you're growing cotton, you know, to make money, uh, this, this isn't always the case. And you're not always operating at about uh, 100 RPMs, 50 RPMs, what I'm doing here. You're usually operating at about 800, 1,000 RPMs. And if the seed decides to get stuck, uh, it explodes and gets crushed. Which means you have to pull all of that out after you're ginned, and that's not efficient. Which is why upland cotton is ginned with a saw gen. But I grow Sea Island cotton, which is not upland cotton, so I haven't built a saw gen. If you want to know how to build a saw gen, there's a million videos out there on that. But there's no videos on how to build a roller gen, except for now. Now, let's demonstrate this from the reverse so you can see the lint actually coming through the rollers. So I've got my fluffed up Sea Island cotton lint here. Put it between the rollers, and there you go. Seed fell out, and the lip came under the support board again. Now, here's a close up of the ginning process itself, straight from the seed in the roller. Easy as pie. So that's ginning Sea Island cotton on your homemade double roller cotton gin. Uh, I hope you actually built one of these and you enjoyed the series. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was of some use to you. So this is something I'm doing out of necessity because, you know, there's no how-to videos on how to build double roller cotton gins out there. So I guess I'm going to have to invent, design, build my own. Uh, and then make videos to show you how to make your own in case you're out there growing heirloom cotton strains and you need some way to get the fluffy white stuff off the seeds uh, without having to pick it all out by hand. I know there were a few companies out there who made uh, roller cotton gins, but I don't know if they're still doing it. So, hope this is useful to some of y'all. And this is something that anybody should be able to do, even if you're on a budget, um, not so long as you have a table saw at the very least. Which I know might be a hurdle for some people, but you can get around that uh, with hand tools. It's just it takes forever and it's not as precise. If you're a good woodworker, you can work around it just fine. You can make some way prettier in this ugly piece of sin. So anyway, thank you for watching. This is Tom's Biological Videography. Uh, I know this has kind of turned into an agronomy channel now, but, uh, you know, man's got to make a living. So that's what they pay me to do. Until next time, Tom out.